Hello everyone, welcome to the Home Cooking Show. So today we have a very special guest with us. He's a renowned nutritionist and health specialist uh, in India. And he is Ryan Fernando. Welcome Ryan to the show. It's wonderful to have you here today. Hi Hema, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be part of your show and giving advice to your fans. You know, as a nutritionist, my job is to convince people to eat much more nutritiously. Your job as a recipe queen is to make people cook at home. And I always say that when my celebrities come to me, they're like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going out, we're eating outside and all. And I have to convince them that, uh, you know, the food they buy and they prepare at home has love in it, has a lot of uh, cleanliness in it, food hygiene in it. And so uh, I'm very excited to see that today, can we get the information of cooking food at home? But at the same time, how can we make it more nutritious? Absolutely. I'm very excited as well. So before we go into a more serious uh, discussion, um, I wanted to know what is it that we need to do? Just, you know, because ever since this pandemic has started, you know, there's been a lot of confusion, chaos, fear and anxiety among people as to how do they maintain good health um, immunity uh, to actually fight this virus? So what is it that we need to do? This is a very powerful question, Hema, because mm -hmm. uh, the human body has got its defense system. That is our immune system. And it yes. is the immune system that is uh, pro uh, protecting us against this virus today. Yes, the vaccine has come out. But before the vaccine came out, when people got COVID, 97% of the people were surviving. 3% was succumbing. That means there's a huge positivity there that your immune system is the sole protector of your body. Now, this immune system, white blood cells, contain huge number of cells which require protein, which require carbohydrate, which require a lot of vitamins and minerals for its production. Imagine if we went to battle, then we have to give our soldiers ammunition and weapons and artillery and, uh, you know, just machines to go and fight the enemy. In this case, the enemy is the coronavirus. And the problem is when people get the coronavirus, they kind of lose their appetite, they lose their taste, sense of smell. So my appeal to anyone is if you don't have COVID, you need to eat well for your immune system to be on heightened alert and be ready to do battle. If you get COVID, uh, you have to in, uh, focus all the more on eating nutritiously because every day there's a battle happening in you and that battle goes on for 14 days before you become negative. So in those 14 days, I don't want your immune system to give up and say, oh, you know what, this person's not giving me any food, any nutritious food. So I think our job will be to combine great home cooking and great nutrition and allow people to survive in their immune system and come out triumphant. Great, thanks for that uh, wonderful answer. So going to the next question, how important is home cooked meals or you know nutrition and cooking at home how important is that? Hema, this is so, so important. This is, in fact, the only question that anyone should ask. Home cooking versus outside food. You see, when you go out to a restaurant, first of all, the quality of food that is purchased uh, may not be of the highest quality. For Let's say a simple example. I recommend beetroot a lot because it increases vasodilation. Vasodilation means it expands the blood vessel. Now, when I buy beetroot, I buy organic beetroot. You see, about one and a half month ago, I had COVID. My wife had COVID and my son had COVID. So we had to get rid of the domestic help, right? And there was nobody to help us. But my logic as a nutritionist was we need to get the best quality ammunition into our body. Ammunition meaning nutritious food. In fact, I have done a lot of research on a lot of your recipes and I've come up with some great stuff. But the first thing that I want to appeal to people is that Home cooking transcends any sort of other food that you would order from out because your smell and your taste is gone during COVID. Oh, so then the question people ask me is, but then what's the point of, you know, uh, slogging? I'm tired. I've got body aches. I can breathe very little. And why should I struggle in the kitchen? You need to get the food prepared by a loved one, by your neighbor, home cooked, nutritiously sourced, washed well. Because I'll give you an example. Food in the restaurant, that cook is just going to cut the vegetables. I want colorful vegetables, green leafy vegetables. He's not going to wash it. 
it's going to be laden with its insecticides and pesticides. So that's going into your body. So you have to fight the virus, plus your liver and your intestines have to detox the chemical coming along. So you're fighting a battle on two fronts. Whereas with home cooking, rest assured, you will wash the vegetables correctly. You will try to buy organic. You will cook it with love. Something called as the quantum energy of healing. Dr. Deepak Chopra, a very famous Indian doctor in US, has talked a lot about how when food is prepared by your hands, by the love and you know the 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 uh, positive vibrations, Absolutely. the food yeah. absorbs that. That is why uh, in the olden days we would pray over our food, we would put water over it, we would give thanks for the food, uh, uh, humbly pray for the people who grew it, prepared it, because I think that vibration is very important for healing. Important. With today's science, we can't see the healing properties of food under a microscope. But I can okay. tell you, it does exist. It's called the quantum energy of healing. And as a nutritionist, I hugely subscribe to it. So I advise everyone, home cooked recipes is the way forward. Yes, buy the greatest ingredients and everybody Hema should become like you, a master chef in their own kitchen by following you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, we, we have a big list, a good playlist uh, for you guys um, below the video. So you can go check out all the recipes um, that Brian is going to talk a lot more about nutrition and health aspects. So we will uh, be giving a, a, a lot of recipes for you guys to try and enjoy. So you had mentioned um, that all of you were sick uh, with the virus. Uh, how did you cope with that and how did you recover? What helped you to, you know, during the 10 days or 15 days that you were sick, how did you manage? But you look fine now, hale and healthy, and uh, it's wonderful to see you. <laughs> so the first secret, Hema, is I want to tell uh -huh. everyone, uh, I work with my own COVID patients at Koa Nutrition on their diet. I had COVID. We had, we had symptoms, but very mild. I think if you eat nutritiously and you have a good fitness regime, a good workout regime, a good exercise regime, your symptoms of COVID are far lesser. This is what I am. I have been observing. So already having a good lifestyle of good eating habits and good exercise habits had saved us. But nevertheless, the day we tested positive with the RT-PCR, from that moment onwards, we began to trust the doctor for the medication. And then I put on my nutrition thinking hat. What are the top foods? In fact, okay. yesterday, I spent a lot of time going through your recipes and I found some amazing things. So at the basic level, Hema, I was looking at things that are like turmeric, how I would add more turmeric. You have an, you have an amazing recipe called the turmeric milk. If your fans and my fans are not allergic to milk, we could do a haldi dood. Okay, so turmeric, very few people know, has antiviral properties. So yes. when you increase the turmeric, don't do too much because the other day I told one of my clients, hey, you know what? Turmeric is very good. She started putting one tablespoon and she got acidity. So turmeric is dangerous. How much? <laughs> Maybe three pinches, you know, uh, and basically uh, that would be sufficient. But add turmeric in your dals, in your pulaos, yeah. uh, you know, in your I use vegetables. a lot of turmeric. Yeah, in the Indian cooking, I mean, at home, I use a lot of turmeric for I think, most of my uh, cooking. So I, that way, and it will be it will be about quarter teaspoon or half a yeah, teaspoon. Yeah, that's about quarter teaspoon to half teaspoon, not more than that. And that is more than enough for a family of three to get the yeah. en enough of turmeric. So people are overdoing the turmeric. I love your amla pickle recipe because amla has got uh, antiviral properties also. It has got immune, sy immune system vitamin C boosters. Uh, the orange lemon cooler. At some point, I was having 16 oranges a day. Wow. Uh, 16 oranges a day because you know my mindset is right for now. Hey, listen, I'm the general of nutrition. I am sending all my AK-47s and bombs to help my, my soldiers defeat this coronavirus. What am I going to do? Are they better? Eight orange juices in one glass. Now I'm a skinny guy, okay? So I can have juice. I don't have diabetes is a problem. But if you're put on steroids, if you have a sugar problem, then you might want to eat an orange. But Hema, you have an amazing uh, dish called the orange lem uh, lemon cooler. And I like it because you've even put coconut water in that, which has um, the ability to prevent cramping. You see, when we, when we get the virus, a lot of us get body pain and body ache and a lot of sweating and dehydration. So electrol is one way, 
but the other way would be to take natural agents natural beverages from life and add them in the other one that i want everyone to do is add walnut and more protein in their diet so walnut in chinese medicine has been used to heal the gut most people with the corona virus one out of 3 get loose motions because the virus attacks the digestive system also walnuts yeah. is known to protect the immune system protect the digestive system and make it recover faster another thing walnut contains melatonin so melatonin helps you sleep better and everyone with the corona virus as a post trauma kind of recovery thing is saying that i'm finding it difficult to sleep so yeah. definitely i would add your you know you got various recipes with walnut akrot yeah. which is yeah. so, so amazing yeah yes. and and i cannot end i cannot end without saying drumstick which mm-hmm. is the most important vegetable on the planet in my opinion for corona because there's okay. research saying that you know the virus has fingers uh, like prongs which attach to the host cell so what the drumstick research had done is they dehydrated the leaves and the fruit and the seeds and all and they found that when they dropped it into a petri dish in the lab mm-hmm. they uh-huh. found that the antiviral replication meaning the one virus could not produce another virus was inhibited okay. so okay. i was like okay that hap- that happens in a lab dish maybe mm-hmm. i is ryan fernando let's eat a lot of drumstick curry okay, okay. so you have an amazing drumstick curry vegetable and uh, i think uh, that's something that i would give 10 on 10 for everyone to try and follow and this th- then there's so many other things i think uh i i would say that i had tomato soup in addition to oranges all the time because okay. tomato contains lycopene which is a red pigment which helps in the lung function so the other thing no um hema is that soup in my opinion in this covid period can be batch processed meaning okay. our fans can make it and keep it i'm not going to fire them for saying that oh it's in the fridge i do understand that you're going to be tired so what right. me and my wife did is we prepared like almost 5 liters of soup wow, so we okay. would have we would have that soup that tomato soup which was laden with all the spices in it and you know it was organic tomatoes and we were drinking that every day because i knew the tomatoes help in boosting lung function and also when you're sick you know you don't feel like chomping so you know at 11 o'clock 12 o'clock we would have a bowl of soup at 4:35 in the evening we would have a bowl of soup with some small snack so we ate small small meals and kept our system regularly updated and refueled so if you put this in a basket together cook at home batch cooking you have some amazing recipes start putting them together and uh, you know putting that home nutritious ammunition into you Yeah, so we have a lot of recipes. Uh, like Ryan mentioned, uh, the tomato soup, of course, with a lot of pepper in it, right? So the pepper also helps. So we have all those recipes, and we have created a playlist exclusively for you guys during this COVID period. So you can go and check out all those recipes there. So post COVID, so after you've tested negative, um, how long did it take for you to gain back your strength, your stamina, and basically general health? um when is the body ready to uh, go back to normalcy hema that's an amazing question okay because everyone's asking when can i start eating normally when can i start exercising normally now right. i remember testing on the 19th day and i still had a little bit of viral load so a lot of people feel at the 14th day you know you know you can start mm-hmm. jumping around and stuff like that mm-hmm. i do believe that the dead virus remains in your body for up to a month and your okay. body has to clear out this uh, you know soldiers of mm-hmm. battle both right. your immune system and the virus uh having said that recovery is a slow process first things yes. first is i ask people to look at the oxygen saturation and their heart rate Very my important. resting my resting heart rate hema before covid used to be 64 beats a minute post covid my yes. resting heart rate was 78 beats a minute today one and a mm-hmm. half month mm-hmm. later it is still okay. 71 so it is still higher that okay. means there are inflammation markers that have yet to come down so i advise a lot of people eating nutritiously 
mm-hmm. providing your body with a lot of anti-inflammatory foods, which is the colorful vegetables, colorful fruits. Like I just bought purple jamun the other day. Watermelon is amazing. Watermelon has lycopene. And I don't know if your fans would like this, but the white of the watermelon has an okay. amino acid called citrulline malate, which helps in fat burning. So everyone wants slim jim figures. Right. So maybe all your all your people, you know, my cook things are very conjuice because I cut up the skin on the watermelon. It's like, why is this guy putting white into the watermelon juice? And you have an amazing watermelon coconut water cooler. So okay, you've got yeah. some lovely watermelon uh, recipes. So I think that should right. be there. Pomegranate as a salad, pomegranate as a as a juice, juice. pomegranate in an pulao. I mean, you're mm-hmm. the queen of recipes, but I would say pomegranate is like in curd rice our curd rice we add that in curd rice that's that's, that's so famous i love I, and, pomegranate and, and curd rice and pomegranate is such an amazing combination hema because rice how about pomegranate rice they can enjoy some yes. rice as well curd. yes absolutely curd absolutely so yeah. so curd could be the hero and mm-hmm. pomegranate could be the you know the the superhero along with that uh, the reason yes. being is curd will help uh, and and i don't know if people know this 70% of your immunity system the mm-hmm. creation of the molecules that get absorbed into your blood mm-hmm. start at the mm-hmm. gut level so in in coronavirus the gut gets attacked so immune system gets depressed the sleep mm-hmm. function gets uh, hassled curd is one element homemade curd we want people to make the curd at home not the packaged curd that you buy in the market yeah. which is yeah. pasteurized which kill all the bacteria we want okay. the good bacteria called the lactobacillus which is found in curd in bifidobacter so okay. you put this together in hema's amazing recipes of raita curd with uh, pomegranate uh, and uh, maybe uh, the juice. rice along with that yeah and juice also so i think i would rely on you to figure out how could you add curd how could you add pomegranate how could you add watermelon how could you add walnuts uh, into a, a lot of the a lot of the dishes but i think my recovery uh, also came back with me understanding that i don't have sense of taste and smell i mm-hmm. have to make the psychological effort of cleaning up the way i eat my breakfast had to get cleaner what do i mean by cleaner i mean there's a certain planning that happens i sit down on sunday monday to sunday i write down hey let me look at hema's recipes okay monday i'm going to do this tuesday i'm going to do this wednesday i'm going to do this so first is to have a logistic plan like for example right. if i say beetroot to you i want beetroot every day so the beetroot porial <laughs> the beetroot halwa the beetroot uh, juice i want it the whole day but something like a paneer i don't want it every day something like uh, you know egg i don't want it every day you need to alternate so that your body gets different exposures to different proteins different vitamins different minerals absolutely and like ryan mentioned we have recipes for all those ingredients walnuts beetroot pomegranate watermelon uh, everything so we've created a playlist for you guys and you can go check it out um so that was actually a great uh, insight on all the different ingredients that we can use on a day to day basis um, to create all these recipes thanks ryan that was wonderful so we've talked a lot about uh, the vegetarian uh, food and ingredients but what about non vegetarians i'm sure there are a lot of people who eat or who are hardcore non vegetarians how do they cope up with you know the situation and uh, what should they have So Hema, when I tested positive, the first thing I did is I actually went uh, vegetarian. The reason is, uh, when we take a lot of non-vegetarian, the inflammation mm-hmm. markers that is the jagda that happens. Yeah. So your yeah. food goes into your body, and and then the molecules that are broken down enter into right. your blood, and then the the there's a jagda that happens. So there's a mm-hmm. heightened red alert there. Plus right. you have the jo- you have the fight with the uh, antigen uh, antibodies, the virus, and the and your immune system. So right. now you have two battle fronts. instead i advise maybe lesser non veg in the first 8 to 10 days i also those who are taking the vaccine i advise to go vegetarian for a week before the vaccine and a week after the vaccine so i'm not a huge person to play on non veg during that 10 days of covid however post covid recovery because your blood has been bashed up your iron levels have dropped your ferritin levels have dropped especially in women especially in women who have anemia that is low iron levels low ferritin levels if you do a blood test and you find that your ferritin has gone below 20 your iron has gone below 
then you need to have some form of red meat twice, thrice a week. So three, four meals in a week with red meat. Fish is my all time favorite because it's got omega-3. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but omega-3 has amazing action on the lungs, improving lung function. So those of you who want to improve your breath from a non-vegetarian source, fish is a good source of omega-3, chiefly mackerel. Mackerel is an mm -hmm. amazing source of omega-3. Atlantic salmon is also a great source of omega-3. Mm -hmm. But you could also do flaxseed and okay. chia seeds from a vegetarian perspective for an omega-3 intake. Even walnuts have omega-3. There are very yes. good sources of omega-3. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So walnuts, walnuts are absolutely amazing for, for omega-3. In fact, I probably eat about, now post-COVID, I'm eating about a handful of walnuts every evening, both from the sleep perspective, the, the brain perspective. Because for me, uh, a public confession, I feel my lungs were saved in COVID, but my brain got a lati charged by the virus. So a lot of times when I'm doing programs like this, I will find myself, you know, b b stuttering and going right. like that and stuff like that, because my brain's just mis missing a synchronicity. So I, the moment I started eating walnuts, I find the brain getting a little calmer. And if you look at a walnut, it looks like your brain. So nature is kind of giving you a, an input on why you need to add that in your diet. Wonderful. That's great uh, to know. And so much of wonderful information you've given us, Ryan. Thank you so much. I'm sure many of them are very curious uh, about post-COVID exercising and uh, how do we become, you know, because they don't exercise for almost a month, I think, and the body's very weak. So when is it a good time to get back to exercising and, you know, doing all those normal activities? Wow, Hema, that's like, everybody's asking me this question today. In fact, there was an article that came out in the paper where saying don't exercise for three months. Okay. So let's break it down into small, small bits. Number one, are you a person who exercised before COVID? If yes, my first indication to you is, know what was your resting heart rate. So I'll give you my example. My resting heart rate used to be 64. I used to work out. Okay. Now, post COVID, my heart rate was 78. So when I start working out, I do only walking for five, 10 minutes, little bit of squats, nothing like the one and a half hour workout that I used to do earlier. So it's kind of slow and steady comeback. I want everyone to focus on nutrition eating more discipline rather than eating, putting crap into you and, you know, kind of saying, oh, I'm going to exercise now because there's a lot of inflammation marker. You can check the C-reactive protein, the D-dimer, the uh, ILF and the ESR. Now, I don't want you to do self-prescription, but as a nutritionist, when I'm working with my athletes, I'm working with my celebrities, I'm looking at these markers. I'm looking at the resting heart rate. If they are high, I say, please just walk. Second thing is when you work out, I use an exercise variable that tracks my heart rate and my oxygen saturation during workout. So the moment I see my heart rate go beyond 125, I slow down my activity. So if I'm walking briskly and my heart rate reaches 138, then I'm slowing down my walk. If my heart rate is coming down to 90, then I start walking a little faster. And sometimes as a week progresses, I do like 20 meters distance, little bit of a run. Yes, I feel it on my heart. I feel it on my lungs. You should be ready to wait for three months with PR say, PR say exercise, slow and steady. After three months, start getting back on track because I don't want you to risk a heart attack. I don't want you to risk an embolism or a blood clot just because a celebrity nutritionist came on air and said, yeah, you can exercise. No, I'm not saying it's okay to exercise. I'm saying you should know your resting heart rate. And by the way, if your resting heart rate is above 80, resting heart rate means when you get up in the morning. So put your finger on your pulse. Don't get up from the bed. Count for 60 seconds. If your heart rate is more than 82, you're not a candidate to start working out. Your heart rate has to be below 82, in my opinion. This is, this is my directive to a lot of people. If you have diabetes, if you have hypertension, if you have had COVID where your heart CT scan was over 13, then I suggest only your doctor should advise you when is the time to start. Not me, not Hema. Get professional medical help on starting your exercise. The best advice I can give 
best advice would be not to start immediately. Take it slow and steady. Absolutely, Depending Hema. In, yeah. Absolutely, Hema. Body, because you know, let's perfect. let's say you came to me for advice. I would say, Hema, get into your kitchen and cook those beautiful recipes. Let's learn portion control. If you're making yeah. 500 grams, then you're eating only 100 grams. And let's do three months of learning how to eat on time, prepare beautiful yeah. recipes, learn how to cook in this uh, what what I call as rejuvenation phase, rather than thinking, oh, let me put on my amazing shoes and get out there, but my food is not being focused. So it could be more the three months for food focus and slowly sprinkle a little bit of exercise every day in your lifestyle. Food, nutrition, this is what we need to focus on during this time. That's, that's what yes. is going to help you build your strength, your stamina and your immunity back. So wonderful. Thank you so much, Ryan, for that. So the next question I wanted to ask you was about uh, the vaccine. Now, we got our first shots uh, way back in April and we didn't know what to expect because I think everyone reacts to it in a different way. We were extremely tired. We had extreme exhaustion and fatigue and we couldn't just get off the bed for about a day you know, or two. So what is it that we can do to prepare ourselves maybe before uh, getting the vaccine? So a huge secret that I want to share with everyone. Uh, I took the vaccine about the same time on 2nd of April. I had absolutely no pain. I didn't even have fever. The logic is that, uh, you know, you want your immune system to be very calm. Oh. Then when the vaccine comes in, it raises the immunity for that uh, memory response to happen that, oh, this is an invader, but it's not the real invader. It's a camouflaged invader. And yeah. how do I attack it and overcome it? So that's an immune response. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get body ache, body pain, yeah. fatigue, yeah. fever. Um, some people get vomiting, but overall, this is a good thing to happen because your body is responding. As a nutritionist, yeah. what I would say to you is that if you can keep your immune system in like a very chilled out mode. You know, like when I go to Goa, I'm very chilled out. So you want to keep your immune system in a Goa mode before taking the vaccine. What do you need to do for this? Number one, I advise three to five days before the vaccine, no non-vegetarian, no alcohol, no high sugar recipes. So literally lowered sugar means your immune system calms down. Lower alcohol or no alcohol means your sugar. Alcohol is sugar your immune system calms down. Non-veg tends to bring about an inflammation in the blood, a certain amount. So normally we'll eat non-veg. Maybe it's fine. It's okay. But during the vaccine, I said, hey, I know that there's going to be my, uh, my uh, non-veg inflammation. Then I'm going to take the vaccine and there's going to be that inflammation. So this combination is going to raise it up. So let me do one thing. Let me remove my non-veg out of the equation. So I, then my entire immunity and body five days before calms down before I take the vaccine. So this is key things that you can do. So post the vaccine, again, no sugar, no alcohol, no non-veg for five days. After that, you want to start feeding the body so that it starts developing well and responding for the uh, next three weeks or four weeks that it's building the innate immune response. For that, in my, you know, my hat, like how you have your recipe, like how you have your recipe kitchen. I've got my hat of nutritious stuff. I definitely want beetroot. I definitely want watermelon. I want rasam coming in or any khada coming in, which contains cinnamon, uh, garlic. I mean, you know, ga uh, garlic, garlic is an, a, coriander. A coriander is amazing. Black cumin seeds. Uh, cinnamon. You've got an amazing cinnamon coffee recipe. And yeah, the dahi bindi. I would do a lot of dahi bindi post vaccine because you, you've got you've got kasuri methi in there, you've got curd, you've got red chili, you've got coriander. People don't understand that before medicines existed, before vaccines existed, the immune system relied on evolution and nature to run its course of protecting your body. Now I'm not discounting a vaccine. I've taken the vaccine. I'm planning on taking the second vaccine. I hugely believe in medicine, but I'm appealing to people. You've forgotten your roots in food and nutrition. A concept called is Ayurveda. And Ayurveda says everything is found in the food and the herbs that we consume. So all the spices are actually herbs. For example, Tulsi, for example, Amla, very, very, very important. So I love your garlic rice recipe. And, you know, a lot of people post-vaccine, 
Yeah, a lot of people say that they've got a lot of inflammation and they're worried about their cholesterol. So garlic is something that lowers cholesterol. Uh, I would also say to you, you can look at, you have a mutton rib bone soup. Mutton rib bone soup, yes. And, and, and bone broth soup, as a nutritionist, I can tell you uh, releases a lot of cartilage uh, and gelatin, which helps your body's collagen and collagen is like a, 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 a it's like a, a, a protein that forms the, the glue in your skin, yeah. in your cartilage, in your ligaments. So it really, really helps you in terms of uh, having stronger joints because a lot of people post vaccine say, I'm getting joint pains and stuff like that. And body pain, and joint pains, yeah. Body pain, joint pains. Okay. And I think the, the, the bone broth soup would, would really, really help uh, in, in this condition. Great. That's, that was a great insight on what we need to do uh, pre-vaccine and post-vaccine mode. So I hope that was very helpful for everyone who's planning to take the vaccine and already taken the vaccine as well. There's another input that I wanted to give because I prepared my notes the other day when, you know, coming okay. to talk to your fans and, and you okay. have some amazing, amazing recipes like, uh, you know, the egg drop soup. So right. I would say to a lot of people during this period, go lower on all the oily foods, the restaurant foods, bring in soups, uh, your chai, don't go with too much of milk. Uh, for a lot of people, they haven't discovered that they are allergic to dairy. Like when I did my food allergy test, yeah. I'm allergic to every possible milk on the planet except camel milk. So I do believe <laughs> my ancestors lived somewhere around Rajasthan from 500 years ago. Right. So I'm going to be doing your cutting chai with camel milk. But that's the way a nutritionist would do it with Hema's recipes. Okay. So you uh, to find camel milk, Brian. Hey, you, you know, in Rajasthan, you do you, you, yeah. you do now get camel milk, which is dehydrated, not the best milk. I mean, I'm going to be watching your page to see if you can come out with a great camel recipe dish. <laughs> And then we have lemon <laughs> lemon iced tea. So if you take yeah. away the milk, for all the people who are saying, Ryan, what are you suggesting? I can't drink that milk. I have a nice thing. That, you know, in a cup of in any cup of um, uh, tea, you will put fifty to hundred ml of milk. My team yes. and me at Quan Nutrition did a calculation that mm -hmm. for every hundred ml of milk, a person gains three kgs per year because of that milk. Wow! <laughs> so I want everyone to shift. To your lemon tea okay. because black tea is known to have polyphenols and tannins which have an immune boosting activity mm -hmm. uh, at the same time the chai is calming because it contains something known as theanin which works on mm -hmm. the brain and does creative thinking but okay. putting milk and sugar is detrimental mm -hmm. to the health of the body so go black, go lemon, go cinnamon with your chais or your coffees. I think that would be the biggest tip on the beverage front because all of us are working from home and we want something. In fact, right now I'm having yeah. I'm having a, a tulsi lemon normal black tea. So there's a little bit of tulsi, there's a little lemon, and there's uh, there's there's black tea. No sugar in it. You you want to develop a taste bud that says I don't need any sweetness. Wonderful. This is amazing. You've given us some amazing tips. So I'm sure every, it's going to be very, very useful to everyone who's watching. So now that we've discussed about uh, COVID, about the vaccine, can you give us five important tips to maintain general health for everyone? For everyone. Good question. Good question. I, I think if I were to choose five important steps and if people can you know, say that this is easy to follow, one is learn about one superfood every day. Superfood is a food that you add to your normal recipes. For example, garlic. Garlic contains allicin. Allicin is a superfood. It reduces cholesterol, is anti-cancer, clears up your sinuses, antibacterial, antifungal. So it's a superfood. Beetroot is a superfood. It contains nitrate. So I would like everyone to learn about nutrition because when you learn about nutrition, you start adding those foods to your life and it becomes that magic pill that makes you healthier. Second thing, research has shown 10,000 steps. I would advise you to get an exercise wearable and track the number of steps. You know, Hema, our grandparents were much slimmer than us, much healthier than us because they constantly did work, not workout. 
Now yes. in today's world, everyone's like workout, 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 but I do know workout. So what I'm telling people, try and achieve 10,000 steps for weight maintenance. If you want to lose weight, you need to hit 15,000 steps. As of today, Ryan Fernando has done only 3,000 steps. Why? It's a Sunday. So I have to go for a workout of one hour walking, which will give me 5,000 to 6,000 steps. So then I'm close to 9,000 and I still not lost weight. So my biryani that I ate today for lunch is going to go from my lips straight to my belly and add a little bit of fat. So I'm worried about today's eating outside food. And speaking of eating outside food, that's my third tip. Home cooked, home cooked, home cooked, home cooked. Your recipes are golden nuggets of health. The reason being is, Hema, you are empowering people to eat at home. You eat at home, you buy nutritious food, you buy organic food, you wash the vegetables, fruits, and, and the produce that you get. In outside foods and restaurants, I know that they're never washed properly. So forget about hygiene. The insecticides and pesticides that are sprayed on that crop is coming to you in that restaurant food because the people in that restaurant were too lazy or too uneducated or did not have a love equation with you to give you a healthier food. Fourth one, add colorful veggie or fruit in your diet every day. Every day I'll say I'll add one color. Today, my color is purple. I'm adding purple jamuns to my diet in addition to beautiful orange from mangoes, in addition to beautiful orange from uh, oranges. And um, maybe I think I did, yeah, I did a watermelon and beetroot juice today. So I got red, I got purple, I got orange. So instead of looking at the food, I'm looking for color because I know that this color goes into my body and protects me. Uh, it in, in improves my health. And final point, we are going to become the capital diabetic nation of the world because we are all desk jockeys, DJs. We move only our fingers and we use our brains. No other part of our human body. In this video, we've hardly moved at all, right? right. But right. we are eating, we are eating Hema like our grandma, our great grandma, but they did a lot of physical work. We take the lift, we take the cars. Hello, Mr. Basket, could you send my vegetables? We don't even go to the supermarkets anymore where you have to push your trolley and burn some calories. So the most important thing is I would tell people reduce carbs. So in the old days, we ate this much of rice, mm -hmm. we ate this much of dal, and we ate yeah. this much of sabzi. So what I say to people now, make this ulta. Do this much of sabzi, do this much of dal, and do this much of rice or carbs or roti. I think that is the perspective for you, me, all our fans, and our children. We educate our children how to change the way they eat for the new universe. Thank you so much, Ryan, for all your valuable tips, advice, and information. I'm sure all our audiences are going to love this. And it's going to be very, very useful to all of them. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.